In video three, I showed you how to copy data across into Desmos, and we drew these two box plots of the mean air temperature from May and September, Beijing 2015. In this video, I'm just going to add to that a little bit by mentioning standard deviation and then showing you a slightly more advanced spreadsheet technique so that we can analyze the data from different months really quickly. So these box plots that we drew, we saw how the temperature in May had a much greater spread than the temperature in September. Now in the AS course, we learned that standard deviation is a better measure of the spread of data. The range, for example, doesn't take into account all the data in between. It just takes into account the highest and lowest. And standard deviation is a way of measuring spread that takes into account all the data. We can calculate standard deviation very easily in Desmos by writing ST dev, like standard deviation, opening brackets and putting in our lists of data again. So ST dev for M gives us the standard deviation for May here, and ST dev for S gives us the standard deviation for September, and as predicted, the standard deviation for May is much greater than the standard deviation for September. Now those numbers on their own don't have a specific meaning. So if I just gave you 2.7, you wouldn't really be able to say a lot about what that 2.7 means. They're used to compare, and we can see that 4.3 is bigger than 2.7. This becomes clearer when we have more standard deviations. So suppose I want to find the standard deviation of the air temperature for every single month on this spreadsheet. So that's May to October. I could do this by copying each month into Desmos and doing the same thing. But there's a slightly quicker way in Google Sheets here. What I first need to do is pick out the month for each of these dates. Obviously, we can see what the month is, but we need it clear in the spreadsheet. So let's do that. I want to right click where it says B here, and I'm given the options, and I want to insert one column to the left. And this column is going to be month, it's going to pick out specifically the month. And there's a formula for this. I write equals month, understandably, I open my brackets and I click on the date that's next to it, close brackets and press enter and it tells me that that is the fifth month, May. I want this for every single date. I don't need to type in the formula, formula each time. I hover, hover over this handy little box in the bottom right of the cell. And if I click and drag on that downwards, it will copy the formula downwards, but referring to where it's meant to refer to. So if I just do this to June, it will tell us that that's the sixth month. Let's copy that all the way down. So clicking and dragging on that little box in the bottom right, and it will spit out all of the months that I need. Now the spreadsheet knows which month is which, we're going to analyze this. I want to select these three columns, including the titles. I'm still clicking and dragging, left clicking and dragging, and selecting all of this data in the first three columns, including the heading. Now spreadsheets like this have a tool called a pivot table that allows us to analyze these, these data. I click insert, no I don't, I click data, pivot table, there. And I want to put it in a new sheet and I click create and it makes a new sheet in my spreadsheet with this empty table in it that I can manipulate. 
I want my rows in this table to be the months. There we go. And it's got all the months that we had. And I want the values in this table to be the daily mean air temperatures. Now the default here is that it's added up all of the temperatures, but that's not really meaningful. So I can click on this drop down box here and choose what I want it to do really easily. If I wanted the minimum temperature in each, each month, I can now just click on minimum, min, and I get the minimum temperature for each of the months. Similarly, maximum, so where does it get the hottest? It gets the hottest in May, June, July. That 32.5 was the highest temperature. I could find the average. So average there, it calculates the mean. There's a separate option for median. So I can see the mean temperature in each month very quickly. And the highest mean temperature is again July at that 26.8. And another option is ST dev like it was in Desmos to find the standard deviation and I can see that May had the greatest standard deviation by quite an amount. So the temperatures varied the most in May. Where did they vary the least? Well all of these are very similar but they varied the least in May, June, July, August. They varied the least in August. Hopefully you can see now how that pivot table makes it very easy to, easy to get those statistics very quickly. Perhaps you could practice that by trying to recreate what I just did with that pivot table and then try applying it to whatever data you want to analyze. Good luck with that.